and, and I want to stir in a little football, Tim, because I'm not sure who got beat up worse, the Pittsburgh Steelers or Seth Rollins. Oh, wow. <laughs> Wow. What, what what about that? We all saw what happened on Monday night. A fan uh, bum-rushed Seth Rollins, took him down. Uh, Seth almost had a choke on him, but then it got broken up. What's your take on that? There was a time when that would have really severely hurt Rollins' reputation when people thought it was a shoot and, and you had to be tough. Right now, I'm not sure how much it matters. Yeah, it doesn't matter. And... uh in all fairness, and I, I could say a lot of cute things, but I'm not going to. Um, Are you sure? Yeah, I. I yeah, because I, I don't want to. I don't want to. Every time I say something, I, I have to involve other people, and then they, they have to endure the consequences. So I, I'm just going to say this. Um, I, I've seen that happen, but I've never seen it where the the, the, the we call the mark the fan. You know, clearly it was getting the better, get, clearly getting better of the individual. But my my problem with it, Seth, is that if you're a top guy in this business and you know anything about the psychology of what the fans think and feel, which they really do, you never, ever, ever get off an airplane in LA and say, I was terrified. Terrified of what? Terrifying Seth is being in an airplane crash. You were terrified or horrified by a wrestling fan? Come on, man. What I would have done if I was Seth, which everybody should learn from this, is that even if the referees had him, I'd have jumped back on him, even if I never got a shot at him. I know your answer is going to be, well, there's lawsuits and all that. The WWE would have covered the lawsuit. Seth never would have got to him. But you, if you're a heel, you never admit defeat. You just don't do it. Do you think I ever beat anybody? No. But in the words, in the minds of most people, I didn't lose because I never lied. I kept lying about it, even <laughs> though it was a work. <laughs> you never, you never admit you got your ass kicked. Much less being horrified or terrified. Yeah, I, I agree. That was a bad look for Seth after the fact. It was and, a uh, bad look for TMZ. Christ. But uh, I got to tell you, uh, you, you have more stories than I do about fans jumping on wrestlers and getting the worst of it. But uh, what I want to share is from the late 90s on Nitro, during a match between Dean Malenko and Psychosis, yeah. a, fan hit the, a fan hit the ring. And uh, my friend growing up from just down the street in Pittsburgh, uh, Brian C. Hildebrand, who refereed yeah. for WCW as Mark Curtis, passed away uh, far too young from stomach cancer. Great guy, and I, I miss Brian horribly. But this fan hit the ring, and Brian kneed him in the head, then choked him out with the guillotine in like five seconds. Yeah. And he was five foot five, a buck forty. Rick, I know you remember that. That was amazing. And we called Brian the shooter after that. Yeah. Well, let me tell you, in the old days, especially the referee was every bit as part of the action. You know, and things that I used to do, like have a referee hook the guy's arm so I could sneak in a punch or you know, hit him in the eyes. That kind of stuff could get a referee killed back in the 70s <laughs> because they literally thought the referee did it. You know what I mean? It wasn't like I was telling him to do it. Um, and of course, we've all been, you know, jumped on by, by people in the rings. I mean, I can't tell you how many times me and Valentine had to fight our way out. In the South, they were they really, in the South, well, I think they really think wrestling, well, Outside of maybe New York in the old days, because I heard they had riots outside the garden. But in the South, I have seen some unbelievable uh, attack by fans. Um, in Atlanta, we had a riot the night that uh, the, the four horsemen with Ole turned on Dusty Rhodes. It took us an hour and a half to get out of Atlanta, out of the, out of the cage and out of the building. And this is the Omni. This is like in the 80s. So, you know, we've seen a lot of tough, a lot of tough situations that, but you can't ever let them think that they get that that you're afraid of them. But the minute they think you're afraid of them, then then the situation gets out of control. So you just gotta swing and hope for the best. Now, what's the what's the most lopsided wrestler on fan beating you ever saw? When a wrestler got jumped, who really took it to a fan that you witnessed? Because uh, I I know some guys like Harley, you know Bruiser Brody. You just you know you you were in for a really hard time if you if you crossed them. Well, I've never seen anybody jump on uh, 
on Harley. I've seen Harley invite people into the ring that thought they could beat him. <laughs> no good luck with that. And Brody, Brody just terrorized people. I mean, <laughs> first couple of times I wrestled him, you know, I thought to myself, man, this is going to be a long night. And it was, but that was a business back then. And when I started, you had to be tough. I certainly was never considered a tough guy, but I must have been fairly tough to survive the 70s because, you know, I've been hit harder. I, Jack Mulligan slapped me in 1978 so hard on a wrestling TV angle that broke my jaw and my eardrum. Okay. Um, you know, Michael Hay one day, uh, <laughs> the business has just changed. You know, uh, Sean threw me in the ropes one time and I missed the top rope. And I went in and I, I, I broke my nose, tore my lip open, and I'm out on the floor and uh, with Kyoto rocked up and says, hey, he says, get back in the ring and get through this. And I go, okay, <laughs> okay, Michael, I will, I'll figure it out. <laughs> By the way, where am I? So it's just, that's the way our business is. I mean, you got to be tough to be in this business period. Even today, these kids are tough. I can tell you right now, and I, I always, I can't help her bring her in. She can kick anybody's ass. What, <laughs> what who asked? Who, yeah, your daughter. My yeah, daughter, yeah. Second generation kids are taught to be tough. Roman, the, uh, Roman Reigns, um, the uh, the Uso. That's why I'm, I'm such fans of, of kids that had to really be tough to just survive in life. And if you've been a real athlete and really competed at a top level, you're tough. You're mentally tough. You're physically tough, and, and you and you're, you're honed and trained to be. To, I mean, if that same thing had happened to Ashley, or hypothetically, I don't know that the guy could have got taken Ashley down. <laughs> no, she's she's tough, man. I mean, you know, you don't think Tamina's tough or Nia Jax or Natty Nyhart? Are you kidding me? You, they come up in families where you had to be tough. Oh, Natty and Nyhart I, got trained in the dungeon, so we yeah. all know how tough. Yeah, but, that's, she's and, and, and I, but I can assure you that Tamina and Naya and people like that are in their Samoans are playing tough no matter where they're trained. Why do you think why do you think to this day we still talk about Haku? Why do oh. we still why, why, why do we still talk about Harley Race? I mean the island guys have no fear. Well, legendary I mean, toughness and and by all accounts, Haku was by far the toughest guy. No, I, 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 you never know. If, I, I, I love Haku because Haku was so damn big, but I'm still rolling with Harley Race. And don't ever take Dick Slater out of the equation. I mean, let me tell you something. We're in Japan, and it's Dick Slater and Tenru against Bruiser Brody and Stan, who terrified and beat the crap out of the marks going to the ring, out of every wrestler that ever got in the ring with him. When Dick Slater was in there, <laughs> No dice, huh? No dice. Nobody well, Nate, wanted. Nate, no, did you ever no, see? No, no, nobody wanted to try Slater. I mean, it, it, you know, I could give an example when promotions went up against each other, like in Knoxville with Barnett and Fuller. So they brought in Bob Roop. I think Barnett did. Fuller brought in Dick Slater. Guess who? Guess who won that one? And Bob Roop was an Olympic wrestler. He he crawled out of the bar on his hands and knees, begging Slater to get off him. <laughs> now, Nate, did you ever see a fan pull a knife, pull a gun, anything like that? Oh, you... God, I was I was there the night Ole got stabbed, 106 stitches, and he worked the next day. Now, where did he get stabbed? I mean, on, on his in way the through the, in the way? Ad, in the ad, no, first of all, he went up, he saw the guy, he was an older man, 60, I think like 65 years old. Ole went up to block, to block the blade coming, right? It cut his wrist, and then he caught him, and he cut down a hole halfway through his chest. From his upper pectoral to his belly button. And they and put Ole in jail for attempted murder. So, Ole hit the, what's that? So the guy was 65. He was an older guy. Yeah. Maybe he went to high school with Ole. <laughs> no, but I'm saying that's the way it was back then. You would fight our way out of that Greenville Memorial Auditorium, Columbus, uh, Columbia, South Carolina. Are you kidding me, man? It was a fight to get to the stage. Now, Nate, but, you know, uh, but but here's the problem: if we didn't get that kind of reaction, we were pissed because we wanted right, we, right. we wanted him like that. 